Like every other long-term Zelda fan, I was pretty hyped to finally play Zelda, and all the trailers and everything made this game look good, but damn Nintendo. Really? We had no idea. If you're a fan of the 2D Zelda games, then Echoes of Wisdom is for you. It feels like a love letter to classic Zelda titles. In fact, although this game utilises the same art style and engine as Link's Awakening, it constantly reminded me of A Link to the Past, which, you know, can't be a bad thing. Especially with the whole still world, dark world comparison. Echoes of Wisdom manages to tick all the boxes that a Zelda title needs to tick, while simultaneously breaking out of the box and innovating in a way that Nintendo somehow still continue to, and no other games company is capable of. The ability to summon and build, and the puzzles and gameplay elements introduced to complement these mechanics make for a totally original and brilliant game. Come on fellas, let's kick his ass. Ah, well done. Get it? There are a lot of elements that make up a Zelda game that Echoes of Wisdom does really well. Whether it's the simple things like smashing pots. I'm a princess. What the fuck are you gonna do about it? Collecting empty bottles, or just staple Zelda items like the big key. Or the more complex things like exploration and collecting heart pieces. Having a variety of mini games to play, side quests, weird and quirky NPCs. Just fuck already! Having great temples with interesting gimmicks, or puzzles that make you think out of the box, this game hits all those points. It also does an excellent job of scratching those nostalgia itches with recurring NPCs like Danpei, Andrew the Cuckoo Lady, the Great Fairy, the Great Deku Tree, and some classic boss appearances like Goma and Volvagia. The side quests in this game are fun too. You get lots of simple, show me this monster, or show me this item type side quests, which serve mostly just to justify the existence of some of the more pointless echoes. But there are also the more complex fleshed out ones, like the monster quests you get from General Wright, or the quest where you have to find the fake soldier, or the monster tracking side quest you get from this church. Oh my god, it's Hermione Granger, what are you doing here? Now it's time to learn to swim. Yeah, read it in a book, Hermione. There are a good variety of mini games, such as Mango Rush, Acorn Gathering, the sleeping dojo place which is absolutely awesome and when I discovered it I immediately stopped what I was doing and completed every available challenge. Or the Goron race, Goron glide, or the fucking piece of shit fucking crap fucking horse race on the good for nothing Tesco burger meat horse. Fuck! Oh fuck. The NPCs are good fun and I love the stamp guy and how reminiscent of Tingle he is. But I kinda just want more Tingle. Come on Nintendo, give us more Tingle. Or at least a translation of colour changing Tingle's balloon trip of love. Freshly picked Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land was such a fucking good game. Puzzles are an absolute must have in a Zelda game. From the Lost Woods in the original to some more frustrating puzzles. Just go in the fucking place. And this game does an excellent job of making you solve puzzles that are completely new to the series in a completely new way. Like using the physics of a floating block to defy a current or sending a ghost echo through the wall to activate a switch you can't reach. The way this game gets you thinking of alternative solutions is just brilliant. Oh hi, have this. No, this. No, try this. Try this. What about this? Do you like this? With the temples, this game has its fair share with their interesting quirks. For example, the water temple, the Jabal Ruins dungeon, where you can raise the level of the water spout to reach higher levels of the temple. Or the Laneru, Lene, Laneru, is that how you say that? The Laneru Temple Dungeon where you have to both cool and heat the rooms to melt and freeze the landscape as required. Or the Farron Temple Dungeon where you have to create your own source of light. Also 100% there should be a Link and Zelda co-op game in the works based on the Null's Body Dungeon. Oh, he did a little bow. Yep. Nice bow. Okay, okay, bow to you too, good one. Oh, that motherfucker didn't give me a bow! And seriously, the dungeon maps in this game are the best in the series. For real, every dungeon map should be like this going forwards. The bosses for the dungeons are pretty cool but a tad samey in places, as they all seem to basically centre around pull on the weak point with your tri pull and then go into swordsman mode and smack them. And that's not too different from most Zelda games, except usually pull on the weak point with your tri pull is use whatever item you got in this dungeon, so it feels at least a little more varied. The Dark Link slash Link's Echo boss fights are a nice touch though. I mean, we fought Dark Link before, but not a Zelda. And in this game we get not one but two Ganon fights, which is nice, and again hitting one of those Zelda must-haves. 
What's your opinion on this? I think this guy. What about this guy? Do you like these things? Speaking of boss fights, starting the game by fighting Ganon is a great way to hammer in that this is not going to be a traditional Zelda game, and that's a good thing. If Nintendo had given us a game that was just a standard Zelda game, except you played a Zelda with a sword rather than Link with a sword, well, I don't think that would have gone down as well. Fuck off! That's not what this is though. There was no better way of framing this game than having Zelda be the priestess to Link's hero. We already knew that she possessed or was destined to possess the Triforce of Wisdom, and having her power be that she can learn and summon objects from the world around around her is a stroke of genius. The way this game centres around learning echoes means that we can play a variation of a series classic and it feels like a completely new game. Why are you gay? And the whole echo mechanic is genuinely fun. I love how the combat in this game basically boils down to killing an enemy so you can learn to summon it, then you can use that enemy to kill other enemies so you can learn to summon them. It's like Zelda is some OP necromancer and I am here for it. Oh, nearly, nearly, oh you almost had each other. Some of the echoes are really fun and interesting to play with, like the spider, or the mole, or the cloud. I mean, the cloud is game-breakingly OP. Another thing I love about this game is how unexpectedly useful certain echoes can be. I mean, when we saw beds in the trailer, we had no idea how useful they would be for building bridges or just chilling and healing. Excuse me. Excuse me, this is inappropriate behaviour. I'm a princess. Excuse me, I'm a princess. Something else this game does that's really interesting is playing as Zelda lets us witness Link and his story from an external position. Normally we assume the role of Link and him being the mute promised hero that he is, we project a portion of our own personality onto him. But now he exists. He's this other character. He's had a life and we get to see the evidence of that. We get to read his backstory and learn about what type of person he is when we aren't controlling him. Serious moment aside, being a princess somehow makes tormenting people even more enjoyable. Oh, you hate bugs. That's terrible. Let me go and deal with all those bugs for you. But in the meantime, you'll love this. Ha <laughs> Have these bugs, you bitch. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call you a bitch. In addition to Echoes, this game also introduces equipment, which is cool, as it adds an extra layer of RPG feel to the game, and smoothies for healing, like the cooking in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Except because Zelda is a princess, she gets someone else to make her smoothies for her. Oh my god! I got the Bukkake smoothie. Some other things this game does excellently is the fast travel is nice and convenient, and having fast travel points within temples is a huge quality of life improvement, especially when the temples are this sprawling. Game does an amazing job of giving you the right tools to solve its many puzzles and make your way through the world, and the 3D exploration within a 2.5D world is breathtaking. I mean, being able to climb all over the trees and explore, or make a cloud staircase into the actual clouds, gives you a real feeling of freedom that no 2 or 2.5D Zelda game game has ever had before. Please. Please, please, please leave. Guards? Help? Story-wise, the game has a decent plot with Void and the, and the Tri, and the Tree. Oh my god, guys, it looks like Lord Jabu Jabu's got something to say. Just f*** already! And there are some genuinely heart-touching moments, like Darston following his dad's tablet and then breaking it for you. Or Conde's loss and missing his big brother. I mean, I fucking love Conde. Conde is so cute. And the bit where he thinks he's been bad is too much. I'm not crying. You're crying. Aww. But you know who's really, really cute? Tingle. Go on, Nintendo. Give us more Tingle. But by far the best thing this game does is... Well, you all know. If you've played the game, you know what the best thing is, right? You can talk to fucking cats. Yeah, here we go. Stop. Wait, wait, wait. You, what? You can, you can get in pots. You can fucking get in the pots. Oh my God, this changes everything. I don't have a huge amount of complaints about this game. Standing where? I'm not standing anywhere. But there are a few things it does that are a bit annoying. For example, there are a few occasions where the game just forces you to go somewhere, completely breaking the freedom of the open world. And it does it in the worst way. Like, you think, nah, I'll go wherever I want, but you actually can't. So why even give me control, game? 
Smoothies are fun, but I wish you could make them more than one at a time. And it's just a shame that so many of the side quests reward ingredients to make more smoothies. We really don't need to make that many when we can just heal from a bed, and they're so tedious and time consuming to make. The only other real complaints I have are that the bosses aren't that memorable, the soundtrack doesn't really stand out. What the fuck are you talking about, Rogma? That was fucking great. Didn't you hear the <laughs> sound effect going on in the middle and everything where they're notes to each other? This was a true, like, prog jazz masterpiece. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about, Rogma. Get the fuck out of here, Rogma. Get the fuck out of here. Wait, which one's Rogma? Is it you or the other guy? And the fucking shit, fucking stupid fucking horse minigame. Fuck! Oh, fuck. To conclude, wow. This game met and surpassed my expectations by so much that my expectations are like that target time on the stupid fucking horse minigame. Oh, for fuck's sake, you shit horse. Honestly, I think this is the best title in the Zelda series since uh, Tears of the Kingdom, Breath of the Wild, Link Between Worlds. Link Between Worlds was really good, but I think this was better. Skyward Sword, Twilight Princess? Twilight Princess. I honestly think this is the best title in the Zelda series since Twilight Princess. Oh my god, Tri's gonna tell me that it loves me. I love you too, I mean thank you. I genuinely can't wait for the next game in this series. Imagine a 3D echo summoning Zelda game, how fucking cool would that be? This game is original, innovative, you can talk to cats, touching at times, and so much fun. I know we've all seen the cutscene where it shows you the castle in every video about this game, but fuck me it's perfect. 10 out of 10, game of the year, no competition.